Tappy activated. Hi, crypto friends. Today, I'll share super duper important data on crypto staking. Connect to my Wi-Fi hotspot and let's charge ahead. Staking is the foundation of the proof of stake system, where people lock their crypto assets, aka native coins, to help secure and maintain a blockchain. Clarification algorithms on. Staking is like putting up collateral to make sure the validators, who check and add new blocks to the blockchain, follow the rules. Only validators can stake directly, similar to how miners work in proof-of-work systems like Bitcoin. Time to decode the difference. While miners use computing power to solve puzzles and earn rewards, POS validators are chosen based on how much they've staked. It makes POS more energy efficient. Some computing power is still needed to process transactions and validate blocks. To keep things fair and honest, many POS blockchains have slashing algorithms. If a validator messes up, like going offline or acting against the rules, they may lose their rewards or even their staked coins. The rewards validators earn come from newly created coins. Traditional ones, like Ethereum, combine staking and validation, but there are types of POS that separate the roles of staking and validating. Get ready to download some examples. In delegated proof-of-stake blockchains, people delegate their coins to a validator, operating a staking pool which gathers stakes. The validator uses these pooled resources to secure the network and add blocks. Easy peasy robot squeezy. The validator and the delegators share rewards. Polkadot introduced nominated proof of stake, where nominators pick validators to secure the network. The clarification protocol on. A certain algorithm allocates the stakes among the most voted validators, ensuring decentralization. Here, reputation matters. Nominators are careful about choosing validators they trust to act honestly and maximize returns. Stakes in NPOS are spread across multiple validators instead of being tied to one. Let me decode this topic for you. There are two main ways to stake, directly or through a third party. Each method has its own risks and benefits, depending on how involved you want to be and whether you prefer to keep control of your coins. First, let's break down direct staking. Individuals lock their assets directly on a POS blockchain, actively participating in the network. This usually involves running your own validator node, which certainly requires some technical know-how, stable internet, and the ability to keep your node online all the time. Alternatively, you can delegate your coins to an existing validator. It's less resource intensive, but you still need to understand the process. Additional data request approved. Direct staking usually has lower fees, or none if you're running your own node, and allows you to earn rewards directly. At the same time, it requires some understanding of blockchain technology, so it's not for everyone. If you are not comfortable staking directly, you can use third-party services like Lido or Coinbase. These platforms make staking easy by doing all the technical work for you. Beep Boop, uploading indirect staking options. It can be custodial or non-custodial. In custodial staking, you hand over control of your coins to the platform. This is the easiest way to stake. There's no minimum amount or lockup periods. However, giving up control adds an extra layer of risk. Make sure to use your processors to analyze if you're ready for such risks. In non-custodial staking, you keep ownership of your coins while the platform helps you stake. Rewards here tend to be higher, and there's less risk compared to custodial staking. First, use your memory board to record this term. Epochs. The thing is, staking rewards are distributed at the end of each epoch. 
a fixed period of time that varies from blockchain to blockchain. For instance, Cardano's epochs last 5 days, while Ethereum's last just 6.4 minutes. As for rewards themselves, they depend on such factors as the total amount of coins staked and network-specific rules. Plus, validators and delegators share these rewards based on their contribution. Let's keep these coins rolling. Staking pools let many people combine their stakes to increase their chances of earning rewards. Delegators in a pool receive a share of the earnings, minus any validator fees. Staking is essential for keeping POS blockchains secure and running smoothly. But it's not without trade-offs. Blockchain designers have to balance three goals, which is the staking trilemma. High security. The more assets locked in staking, the more secure the blockchain. To achieve this, blockchains must offer high rewards, which are expensive to maintain. Low fees. Low transaction fees attract users and help the network grow. But to keep fees low, the network may need to reduce staking rewards or increase inflation. And low inflation, people don't want their coins to lose value due to inflation. But keeping inflation low means fewer rewards for stakers or higher fees for users. Switching on the explanation module. It's impossible to maximize all three at the same time. For example, focusing on security might mean higher fees or inflation, while prioritizing low fees could reduce security. What part of this trilemma is the most important for you? Comment below and make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel to stay ahead of the crypto curve. Tappy deactivated.